Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. For today's video, we have another Macintosh on the workbench. And no, this isn't the Mac 128 from my last video. This is a Mac 512. Quick update on the Mac 128. As you can see, it's working very nicely. After my last video, of course, we had the computer turning on and seemingly working, but I cleaned and lubricated the disk drive. And once I reassembled the computer, the eject mechanism gear promptly self-destructed. This is just like Parafractic's Mac Plus, and when I took the little gear mechanism apart, the main problematic gear that always breaks down literally crumbled apart in my hands. So luckily I had a spare parts drive, so I moved the eject mechanism from that one over, and I do have some of those 3D printed eject gears on order, so I'll get those soon, and hopefully I'll be able to fix a couple of the parts drive I have that aren't working. This machine is just running some Sargon chess here. I'm running it in self-play mode, just as a stress test, so to speak, for this machine. One interesting thing to note, I'm not sure if I mentioned in my last video, is the internal floppy drive on this computer was no longer the 400K drive that came on this. It was actually an 800K drive, the same part number as the drives found in the Mac SE and like the Apple IIGS external drives. So that was a little bit interesting. So it's a double-sided drive. Thank you for everyone who commented on the last video about the memory upgrade and everyone overwhelmingly said I should just keep this machine as 512K because it was a period correct upgrade and a rather nicely done upgrade, not a hack like a lot of them. So this Mac 128 will be staying exactly as it is as you see it right here. But back to the Mac 512. On the back of the computer, there's not too much to report. It's a model number M0001W512K, it says right there. Also 512K on that badge. There's a little bit of corrosion on the battery. I do have the battery door, so that is nice. The funny thing about this machine is I was also donated this computer by the same person who gave me the Mac 128. And this machine was actually working, it turned on fine but I stuck a disc in here, which it did read, no problem, but it went to eject and the disc is now jammed in here. In fact, using a paper clip also does not get the disc out. So I was just gonna go take this computer apart so I could take a look at the disc drive, also clean it and lubricate it. But when I was opening the case, I found something very strange I wanted to show you guys. When I was moving this computer around, I noticed something strange. It felt a lot heavier than the Mac 128. Now I just chalk that up to this being a slightly later machine, maybe Apple put a bunch more metal structural integrity and stuff in it, but that's actually not what's going on. Let me open this thing up and I'll show you. What the hell? Look at this. There's a hard drive in this machine. There's also a power cable here that's going up to a fan and a little power supply that's stuck up in the top of the case. Looking at the part number on the disk drive here too, it's MFD51W03, which also means that this is a double-sided drive. And I think that the Mac 512 also originally came with a 400K drive. You can correct me in the comment section below if I'm wrong, but this is the same part number as the drives on the Mac SE and the Apple IIGS drives. So what the heck is going on here? And when I turned this machine on, I did not hear a fan and I did not hear a hard drive spin up but the computer itself seemed to be working fine. I'm not sure if someone has disconnected these or what, but let's take a closer look at what's going on here. So this is odd. There's some type of an EMI filter here. It looks like some kind of a mains thing. I see another power supply mounted sideways next to the disk drive down there. Here's the hard drive, and I did see that this hard drive appears to have MFM or RLL connections on the back of it, because I saw it from the other angle. I'm gonna plug this so I can show you guys what's going on there. Is that duct tape I see? And what kind of a fan is this? It has four wires going into it, so maybe that's a brushless AC synchronous motor and this is some kind of inverter power supply here. I'm not sure, but this, yeah, the fan is literally just wedged into the case there and this is probably stuck on with double-sided tape. Looking at the machine here, you can see that this is definitely like some kind of an MFM or RLL hard drive. It's a little hard to see because it's dark. You can see here and here are two additional wires that they kind of soldered right onto the power switch, which probably go to the additional power supply in there. I want to power this thing up with the back cover off, and since the disc is jammed in the disk drive and I didn't want to chew up the eject mechanism any further, I have uh, unplugged the floppy drive cable in there. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's turn this on and see what happens. It's very loud. 
but there was certainly no flash on the hard drive. Hard drive power connector is connected. See, and the computer just gives you the flashing disk question mark. So I think the power supply that runs the hard drive is probably dead. It's an extra power supply module down in there. So that's probably no longer functional. It's probably not possible to see, but there are some wires that go down to the extra sandwich controller board down there, and those are from the power supply. So that power supply probably supplies five volts to that board for additional power and the five and 12 volts needed by the hard drive. Okay, so I think the next thing I can do is just take this computer apart. Don't really know how else to get to all this stuff that's sandwiched in here. And knowing the max, I probably have to start by removing the motherboard and then I can try to disassemble things a little bit more. This hard drive is just so close to the CRT. That's just a bit bonkers to me. Anyhow, let's get to it. This is odd. The RF shield on this thing is pretty small. It only goes right there and had scotch tape holding part of it on. Interesting is there's a sticker here that says 512K. And what I'm confused about right now is normally the motherboard slides out of the case this way. But there's a bunch of cables connected to it and things like that, so that's not really possible. And the hard drive chassis underneath there is screwed in under, under the motherboard. I need to remove the motherboard to get that out. So I don't really see how to get this out except for one way. And that's bending the case so I can get this out. And this is kind of like how the Mac Plus was. Remember I said the Mac Plus I had had a, an accelerator on board? There was no way to slide the motherboard out. I had to just bend the case. So I think I'm going to do that again. Oh, okay, that was not easy. I used this to kind of spread the metal apart. You know, it's not permanently bent either. Like I said, it's out, and yeah, there would have been no other way to get this out. Unplug the floppy here. And there's the disk controller right there. It's connected to the CPU using this kind of ribbon cable assembly, and there are the two hard drive cables, and that's the power cable. And the thing is about the Mac is there's a lot of room on this part of the motherboard near the front, but on the back, the clearance is very tight right here, and there's no way I could have slid this motherboard out with that on. The only way to get this on and off is by bending this metal. And I'm assuming they must have had a special tool maybe that kind of split the, uh, that spread that out a little bit so they could easily get the, the motherboard in. I don't see any other way to do it. Okay, so let's unplug the power cable like that. And the hard drive cable, it's MFM or RLL, so it has two ribbon cables. Smaller one and a bigger one. That was the smaller of the two. So there it is. There's the Mac 512 motherboard. The ROM chips say Hyperdrive, <laughs> with a serial number or something, version 706. It says Hyperdrive 20 right there, Rev 1.1. Has a Western Digital Controller chip on it. This is the power input I was talking about. And it has little standoffs, kind of hold it on the motherboard. The Mac motherboard has two holes here and on the other side, so that actually is attached. But this one, see that, it's just loose. And somehow this uh, ribbon cable goes to the CPU. It appears to be some kind of a clip-on thing on the CPU. The CPU is still on the board, is not socketed and somehow that's on there. I would have always thought that it would have been easier to socket that and have the CPU up here on the expansion board. But I guess back in the day, those CPUs were quite expensive and this was an easier way to add expandability. Well, here's the bottom of the Mac and these are the cables, power cable and the hard drive cables. So there are four screws, two right here, two right here. That's to hold the floppy drive in itself. There appears to be two additional holes right here drilled for the hard drive. So I guess I'll start by taking those out and I don't see any other screws holding on the power supply. So I'm assuming the power supply is probably attached to these two screws here and the side of the drive chassis. The hard drive is attached kind of to this floppy drive unit, but I don't see how. Is this screwed on? Oh, that's screwed on. Oh, it's right there. There's a single screw hidden in there. So you can see there's a screw right there that's sort of holding this EMI filter down. 
And I think it was also, yep, it was holding the hard drive down as well. So now I can get that out. All right, now we have our first look at this hard drive. Interesting, it has one of these G-Force indicators here. Warning handle to care, red it indicates excessive impact. Well, there's already a red on one side, so I guess this had some excessive impact. The hard drive model number is the MM112, and it's made by a company called Microcomputer Memories Incorporated. And now the hard, the floppy drive's already unscrewed, so I should be able to get this out. There's the floppy cable. And I have this EFI filter taken off, but this is stuck on the top. There's the floppy drive with my stuck disc. Oh, look, and it came right out. <laughs> so it's not that stuck. So I think I wasn't pushing hard enough on there. All right, so the power supply is sitting in here and it is attached with one screw all the way at the front. And it's a Torx screw, the same one that's used on the rest of the computer. So there's our look at this little power supply. I don't see anything immediately wrong, but this thing is probably dead and doesn't work. But I'll bench test this and see if we can get this working again. Regular uh, PC style hard drive cables. Look at that, they put a little clip on there just to keep them folded over. That's kind of cute. Right here is where we had the reefa caps on the other one. And this seems to have two filter caps, one here and one here. But these are the type that don't explode. So I guess I don't need to change them. That's, that's interesting. I wonder why they use this type on this Mac 512, but on the Mac Plus, which is newer, it had a reefa that did explode. Well, here's the hard drive out of the Mac. I love these dire warning stickers about do not remove cover and exercise extreme care or all warranties will be void. Anyhow, I have this power supply here, so let's plug this in and see if this drive even spins up. Might have stiction, which I don't know if that's an official term, but my friend Dave, just Dave and I, we've been working on computers since the early 90s and we had a lot of hard drives that wouldn't spin and we have our little trick. So let's hit the power here. Oh, power LED. I don't know if that's a healthy sound, but it's definitely spinning. All right, let's turn this off. Not sure if it auto head parks. Turn that on again. Okay, that's a bit more normal. I heard a head seek sound. It didn't make that eh sound. Sometimes these stepper motors can kind of get frozen up over time. This is the head seek motor. I have a previous video, which I'll link to up in the corner here, where I lubricate this motor on an old MFM hard drive and actually kind of make it work again. I've had very good luck with the stepper motors as the bearings go bad and they seize up, a little bit of lubricant kind of helps them live a little while. It's not a permanent fix. The bearings really need to be replaced. You know, the motor will be taken off and rebuilt, but adding the lubricant makes it work for maybe a year or a few years before you have to add a few more drops. Let's just peel this shock indicator off the drive. There's really no need to have it on here. I'm surprised they didn't come off with the plastic. Let's see if I can get these off here. There's one of them. The other one seems fine, but I wonder if I can drop it to trip it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So here's the supplementary power supply for the hard drive and the hard drive controller. And I think the problem might be broken solder joints. I see a couple that look very dodgy on here. So I'm gonna to touch up all the ones that look bad and then I'll bench test this and see if it starts working. So I'm gonna say the usual cautions. Working with power supplies is very dangerous, especially when you're working with mains voltage. I temporarily connected an IEC power connector to it, and I have it mounted on this metal chassis again, so nothing is gonna be touching, and I'm gonna make sure when I connect this to not let my fingers touch anything. So here we go. So that does not sound like it's working. I did not hear it start up. So this is a sw older switching power supply. Reflowing the solder didn't seem to help. I don't really know much about fixing these. If you have any tips, feel free to provide them in the comment section, but I don't see a switching power supply controller on here. It's just got a couple transistors, but all is not lost. Cause look, I have a newer, more modern Aztec power supply here. And interesting is here's the mounting bracket and this mounts right up. All four holes line up perfectly. 
This static power supply also is plus 12, plus 5, and minus 12. The actual output connector is actually the same as well. We have 12 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts, ground, ground, and minus 5 volts, and it's exactly the same on this one. So this connector, I could just take right off and swap this one directly onto here. <laughs> could that not be any more easy? That's ridiculous. All right, it's very sketchy, but the motherboard is here. Power connector is connected to my new power supply, which is sitting back here. Hard drive is connected. I used longer MFM cables from a PC, so I could have it over there. It's plugged into the power supply. And the little EMI filter is sitting back here, and it is connected. And the Mac is connected. I just need to reconnect the CRT, because I had that unplugged while I was working on it. And I think at this point, I am ready to plug a power cord in. Let's do that. Here we go. Hard drive is spinning up. Wow, that's crazy. There's a very weird line pattern. That's not good. Let's try hitting the reset button. Oh my God, we have a happy Mac. It's booting off the hard drive. What? So it's auto boots. Oh, wow. I gotta get a mouse. No mouse is connected. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, mouse connected. Let's try number two, power on. That's crazy, but if I hit reset, what's gonna happen? So I'm thinking my new power supply takes longer to power up that board than it does the old power supply. So that board doesn't get powered up until the computer's already kind of booted up, which causes that weird corruption and crashing. But now it's booted, let's see. We're running system 5.3 or finder 5.3, I don't know. And it's 512K of RAM. And we have two partitions here, one called startup. We open that up. Let's look at how big startup is. Get info. So this disc is 2.8 million bytes, which comes out to about 2,700 kilobytes. And look, it says hyperdrive drawer. So that's obviously whatever driver is happening to, to load this thing. So that's the startup disk. And the application folder or disk. So the second applications folder is 4.3 million bytes, about 4.1 megabytes. And the other partition was about 2 point something megabytes. So what does that come out to? A five or six megabyte hard drive? That is tiny. Could that be right? That seems so small. But amazing that the drive is fully operational now. Let's look at what's on the application folder here. We have Blackjack, DNR8, empty folder, Excel files, FileMaker. Well, I'm gonna end it here at this video. I'm gonna ask you guys what you think I should do with this computer. So like I asked you on the last video, whether I should go to 128 or 512K, same thing for this one. Should I revert this back to stock or should I put this craziness back in here and try to make this thing work again? Let me know in the comment section below or any other comments you might have on the video. Of course, you can thumbs up if you like this video or a thumbs down if you hate this video. Please subscribe for more videos. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.